Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about connecting your web application, your website to a MetaMask wallet so that you can enable credentials for users on your website using their wallets, right? If you're building a Web3 application, you're building anything that involves Block3 and connection to a MetaMask, this is one of the methods that you can do that. So this is what we are going to build in this video. You're going to build this web page. Uh, we are not going to add image in our web page when we build it, but this is what we're going to build. We're going to say connect MetaMask wallet. A MetaMask wallet like this is going to pop up, giving you an option, and it's connected to Gorli, and then say next, and then connect. This is going to get connected, and as soon as I click on get balance of wallet, you're going to get balance of this wallet, as you could see over here. So this is what we are going to do in this video. Let's get started. So in order to get started, we are going to build this up in Ripple IT, Ripple IT. You must have created an account as part of my previous videos. You're going to click on create and search for HTML and say blockchain beyond basics. And you can give any name here and say create Ripple. You can create any, any name, as I said, all right? and it's already given, it comes up with some default. So I'm not going to use this, but I'm going to create our own script. All right, so you can continue working with this, but if you would like, just control A and delete everything. Like, let's let's fresh, let's start fresh, right? And uh, we are going to write a piece of code now. All right, just to get a little familiarized with uh, how Ripple interface works, here is what, is known as Canvas Pane, your coding area, where you write your code. Here are the file browser, and this is where you would see the output of the HTML that you code. I'm going to make it disappear so that I have a little bit of real estate. Now, this is the basic, right? So doc type HTML, you write the tag, head, body, and HTML. So for basics, this is not the video. You probably have to look at somewhere else to understand the basic of HTML. Now, let's create a button. So what we are doing is we are gonna create this button for now. We are not connecting yet, right? So we're just gonna create a button. So this is the button, button ID, connect, connect MetaMask wallet. And I'm going to say on click, this is a JavaScript function that we are going to write. And then connect MetaMask wallet is the text and say button and we are going to give these breaks. Now, if you, if you save it and refresh this piece, you see that this is built. Please understand that this is not gonna work. We are still to do a lot of things, but this is your start. Next, we are going to write a piece of script. So I'm gonna write script, tag in the head section, and I'm gonna say function, this wallet connect. I'm gonna say console.log, so that at least you would see some output, like it's a print, uh, just to ensure that we are here. And then I'm gonna write, there's a function known as window.ethereum. This is only gonna work when you have a MetaMask wallet installed on the browser. So I'm gonna check if type of window.ethereum is not equal to undefined. That means it is present. It is undefined meaning it's not available. So I'm gonna say MetaMask is installed, very simple. So if it is undefined, not equal to undefined, meaning it is present, then I'm gonna say MetaMask is installed, else I'm going to say MetaMask is not installed, simple. This step only checks that the MetaMask is installed. Now what you're gonna do is save this. You will get it refreshed. And this page, which is inbuilt in Ripple, may not be able to connect to the MetaMask. So what you are gonna do is, there's a small button here on the right side, open a new tab. Open it in a new tab, and you would see like this. Right click, inspect, and you look at the console. So it says that uh, unexpected input blockchain beyond basics. Okay, 
So connect to MetaMask and it says wallet connect is not defined. So the reason it says this is because of maybe it is very uh, sensitive to case. It's a case sensitive thing. So let me look why it is not defined. We found that this ending brace was missing for the function wallet connect. Uh, having done that, just click on run again, go back to the page, refresh it and say right click inspect console and it's blank. Click on this, it says MetaMask is installed. At least it understands now that the MetaMask is installed, all right? Now what we will do is we'll get the account information from here. So I'm gonna get the value of the account, the account address now. Let's do that. So going back in here, I'm going to make this function a synchronous so that it doesn't ask you every single time you refresh the page to connect to MetaMask. It's not going to give you that MetaMask popper every single time. If ordered, if you want to test it, what you can do is do not add async and see what the page does and then come back to it and add async there. Next is in here, I'm going to write the function this. Now let's understand what this function does. So it would say, Await. That means wait till going to the next, wait for this particular step to be executed before you go to the next step. Ethereum dot request. So Ethereum dot request, meaning send and a request to the Ethereum connect in order to get the accounts. So this is going to get the accounts from the connected MetaMask. Make sense? Assign it to a variable known as wallet address. And I'm gonna give some more space for me. And then I'm going to log this on the screen. So let's click on run. Just refresh this here, go here. Uh, and make sure you refresh it one more time. You see this is gone, console, say connect MetaMax wallet. It gives you a pop-up, say next and connect. You can see that this ID ending in 3073 is available. Now what I'll do is um, I'll disconnect it. I'll show you how to disconnect. So go to this account, small thing here, and then say connected sites and say, disconnect, all right? Now, let's come back. What we are gonna do is print the wallet address here on the screen itself. So in order to do that, I'll go back to the HTML tags and I'm going to have a wallet address text, so like this. So I'm gonna create So this is a paragraph, PID, address, wallet address text. And to start with, I'm gonna say not connected. And then you have paragraph. And then once it is installed, like console.log, I'm going to add a statement, which means that it is going to, I'm gonna use, document dot get element by ID wallet address text. This is the wallet address text dot inner HTML equal to wallet address. And I'm going to save this. And if I go back in here, refresh, it says not connected and say connect. It pops up, says next connect. And it, it's replaced by the not connected is replaced by the string. If you go in here, it will do the same thing. Not connected and connected. The reason it did not pop up is because I did not disconnect from the website, all right? Now, let's get the balance of the wallet. The balance is around 0 0.53. We are going to get the balance of this wallet over here. So in order to do that, I'm going to set up a few things. The first one I'm gonna set up is, again, a button. 
So I'm gonna write here a button, get account balance. And in between the buttons, let me do a break. So it's gonna at least have a little bit of space. So button, get account balance, and on click, check wallet balance and get balance. And at the end of it, I'm going to do a text. This text is gonna be then used to, to write the balance. So like this, if you look at these are two different things, this is to connect the wallet and this is to get the account balance. I'm gonna create a new function, check wallet balance over here, right? So let's create a new function. How the function is gonna look like, I'm gonna say check wallet balance. And I'm gonna say console.log, check in the balance. And at this point in time, I'm going to get the wallet address text, just making sure that the wallet is connected. All it is doing is putting it here in check balance and making sure that wallet address is connected. So this statements assign the wallet address reading from the read from the wallet. Okay, so wallet address equals document dot get element by ID. The same thing I'm assigning it to wallet address. Please note that this wallet address was a local variable local to this particular wallet. And I'm going to read the wallet again by the wallet element ID to a local. You can make this as a global variable as well. You know, those are technical details of implementation. You can decide your method to implement it. For this particular video, I'm just making it very simple of assigning local variables. Again, you can go global variables, no problems. Now, next statement is gonna get the balance of the wallet. So I'll say let wallet balance equals await window.ethereum. Remember here it was window.ethereum dot request and method eth get balance here it was request accounts so get balance and here i need to pass some parameters too so params wallet address and the latest balance close the array of the parameters and then catch i am going to say if there is an error then console.log error. If there is an error, dot catch is an error. If it is an error, just log it to the console. Close the braces. And now I need to log the balance. So I'm gonna say console.log balance in hex wallet balance. So please note that the balance that is gonna be retrieved is gonna be in hex. Let's do a quick recap. So what we have done is, we have created a function check wallet balance. Again, an asynchronous function. And I'm reading the wallet address. The reason I'm reading again the wallet address in this function is because in the previous case, wallet address was a local variable. Now here you have wallet balance and I'm using window.ethereum.request method eth underscore get balance and parameters. And if in case of any errors, log it. And I'm saying console.log balance in hex wallet balance because the wallet balance that is going to be retrieved will be in hex and you have to convert that so balancing eth is going to be remember 10 raised to 18 this is first convert and then convert into parse float and then convert into 10 raised to 18 and then i'm going to write document dot get element by id wallet balance text that means in the wallet balance text here, on the inner text, make sure that you are writing the ETH. So in the text, you would see ETH. All right, and let's do a small thing here. Just make sure it's aligned. It's not necessary, but it looks good. Save this and go back into the page, say refresh. Now it says not connected. Connect MetaMask. The reason it did not pop up because again, the site on the MetaMask was still connected. All right, now I'll say get balance. Look here, get balance. 
it shows in hex. This is the hex. Sorry, this is the wallet address. This is the hex and this is the balance in Ethereum. That is how you can create your web page and connect it to a wallet and create the, the connection and start doing everything. You can actually you know, transfer cryptos from one wallet to other. There are a lot of coding that needs to be involved. But at, for this video purposes, this is what we had to share. Again, thank you for watching.